Fort Des Moines Church of Christ is suing the Iowa Civil Rights Commission because it feels its rights are being threatened. We believe that churches, every church, should be free to both teach its religious beliefs and to use its house of worship in a way that's consistent with those religious beliefs. The church is being represented by the national organization Alliance for Defending Freedom. In the suit, it claims the Iowa Civil Rights Commission is forcing churches to censor its teachings on biblical sexuality and force churches to open its restrooms and showers to members of the opposite sex. Lawyers for the church claim anything the church does should fall under a bona fide religious purpose, making it exempt. But according again to this unelected commission in the state of Iowa, if a church holds a worship service open to the public, according to the commission, that's not a bona fide religious purpose. Again, it's just an unconstitutional, unprecedented intrusion of the state into the church. But not everyone agrees. So we were really surprised that this church is suing the Iowa Civil Rights Commission just for doing its job. We've had these protections since 2007. And uh, yeah, we're, we're a little concerned. Here in Iowa, we try to be reasonable, and this doesn't feel reasonable at all. One Iowa, the state's leading LGBT organization, says the law is the law. When the church is involved in a bona fide religious activity, um, they can do what they need to do. They can believe whatever they want. But when they offer any kind of public accommodation, uh, they can't break the law. Well, a battle is brewing over what ads should be allowed on bus benches. Across Colorado Springs, dozens of benches have these words on them, Jesus is Lord. But now City Public Works is in the process of reevaluating that advertising policy for its religious message after it got a complaint. Now, the pastor who started the campaign is now threatening the city with a free speech lawsuit. There's a lot of messages in the city that, that I'm opposed to personally, but I don't complain because I understand this is the United States of America. <laughs> well, the church was told it can still advertise on benches, and no ads will be taken down just yet. But for now, no new benches containing language such as Jesus is Lord will be permitted. Dr. Eric Walsh was a respected director of public health in California, serving the poor in the trenches of the Los Angeles area. He also served on President Obama's Presidential Advisory Council on HIV and AIDS. Dr. Walsh was an associate pastor in his church. His desire to serve the sick is based on his religious faith. After accepting Georgia's offer to serve as the Director of Health for Northwest Georgia, Dr. Walsh began preparing to move his family across the country. Then Dr. Walsh received an unexpected request from the state. They asked him to submit copies of his sermons. I submitted four sermons to someone in the department, high up in the department. They reviewed those sermons, and the next day I no longer had a job. Politely sent them copies of the sermons themselves, they reviewed them, and the very next day they fired. State officials called to let Dr. Walsh know he was fired by leaving him a voicemail. What they didn't realize is that they forgot to hang up their phones. There's no more to say it anyway. You're out. very They forgot to hang up the phone, and then I just hear laughter. And I just thought, man, this is pretty, pretty rough. I mean, they have to understand being in the field that me not getting that job is tantamount to the complete destruction of a career. And when they laughed, uh, I mean, it was almost too much to bear. No American should be fired for something they say in a sermon. An Idaho couple faces months in jail and or thousands of dollars in fines if they refuse to perform same-sex wedding ceremonies. Donald and Evelyn Knapp are both ordained Christian ministers who run the Hitching Post Wedding Chapel in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. The city claims its non-discrimination ordinance requires the Knapps to violate their Christian beliefs. And joining us now with analysis on this case is Jennifer Marshall, the vice president of the Heritage Foundation's Institute for Family, Community and Opportunity. Jennifer, unfortunately, we are seeing more and more stories like this that many say really boil down to government coercion. Do you agree? You know, it is coercion, and it's sad to see because we had been told by those supporting same-sex marriage that this was about live and let live and that no one would be forced against their beliefs to conduct a same-sex marriage. And here, how quickly are we seeing it in Idaho, this outrageous demand uh, that's been presented to the NAPs that they 
uh, would face 180 days in jail and $1,000 fine for every day that they decline to perform a same-sex wedding. It's outrageous. Yeah. The country's highest military court weighing in on the case of a Marine who was court-martialed. She argues it was partly for her expressing her Christian faith. Monifa Sterling posted a single Bible verse in several locations around her desk. Her supervisor said the language was, quote, combative and ordered her to take it down. But Monifa refused and was charged for disobeying orders. The text read, quote, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Iowa State University will remove all Bibles from its campus hotel rooms in coming days. The decision was made after the Freedom From Religion Foundation complained. The group's attorney says providing Bibles to guests at a public university, quote, facilitates illegal endorsement of Christianity over other religions and over non-religion. The ISU Memorial Union director says the books, the Bibles, will be removed by March 1st and placed in the building's library and chapel. Well, a school sparking outrage for calling the sheriff's office on a seven-year-old for handing out, get this, Bible verses to classmates, a teacher at the elementary school in Southern California banning the Bible notes like these during lunch saying there should be a separation of church and state. A sheriff's deputy even showed up at the boy's house and told him and his mom to stop because someone might get offended. Teaching Satanism in school sounds like the stuff of horror movies, but a US court ruling on religious freedoms has enabled devil worshippers in Florida to hand out educational material about their beliefs to kids at state schools. Rena Portnaya has this report. Public education in America often uses coloring books to teach young Americans about math, science, and current events. This year, a new book filled with games and lessons about Satanism could be distributed to students attending public school in Florida's Orange County. The 10-page Satanic Children's Big Book of Activities features characters named Annabelle and Damien who demonstrate rituals to explain Satanism. This expanding wealth of information in America's young minds was made possible after a Florida judge last month ruled that if the Orange County School District allowed Christian groups to disseminate Bibles and other materials in its schools, then other religious and atheist groups should be given the same right to distribute their material. And followers of the Antichrist, followers of the Antichrist, the Antichrist, seized on the decision to treat all faiths equally. A spokesman for the Satanic Temple tells Raw Story that, quote, if a public school board is going to allow religious pamphlets and full Bibles to be distributed to students, as is the case in Orange County, Florida, we think the responsible thing to do is to ensure that these students are given access to a variety of different religious opinions, as opposed to standing idly by while one religious voice dominates the discourse and delivers propaganda to youth, unquote. In a ruling that was aimed at maintaining religious neutrality, students who may never have intended to learn about Christianity, atheism, or Satanism will now receive an introduction to all three. Marina Portnaya. If you are now or have ever been a parent to a 15-year-old, you know just how impressionable and fickle they can be. Keep that in mind as we tell you about a shocking new policy in one western state that would allow 15 year olds to have sex change procedures done without parents even knowing about it. Here's correspondent Dan Springer in Oregon. 15 year olds in Oregon can't smoke, give blood or get a tattoo, but now they can get drugs to suppress puberty and even a sex change operation without their parents consent and the government will pay for it. It is trespassing on the hearts, the minds and the bodies of our children. They're our children and for a decision, a life altering decision like that to be done uh, unbeknownst to a parent or a guardian is it's mind-boggling. The decision was made by Oregon's Health Evidence Review Commission, or HERC. With no public debate, it began covering cross-sex hormones, puberty-suppressing drugs, and sex reassignment surgeries for Medicaid enrollees in January. 
Yeah, Greg and Rosanna, good morning to both of you. These guidelines seem to be the first of their kind in the country, and they come from the New York City Commission on Human Rights to, project, to protect the transgender community. There are about 75,000 transgender people living in New York City. So according to these guidelines, business owners and landlords in New York City can face fines of up to $250,000 if they intentionally or repeatedly refuse to address a transgender person with that person's preferred gender pronouns.